everyone. Welcome to Motor Psychology. My name's Jonathan. If you're new here, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. So it's Halloween day. I'm taking a walk through the woods. I've got my video done and the video that I have today, which you're really, really going to enjoy, is showing you how I replace the parking brake or emergency brake on the C3 Corvette. So I didn't have to do the cables. The cables were good. They were in place but I needed to put the new shoes in there and the, the retaining springs and all the other mechanisms in there. So I thought it would be a pretty good uh, video to, to make. I needed to get it done. So where I am, you need to have a working emergency brake or parking brake on your car. So that was the incentive to get it done. A lot of people don't do it because it's such a pain or it could be seen as a pain to get these things done. They're very small and it's a really tight awkward environment to get these things done anyway i try and show that in the video to the best of my ability uh, tight space is hard to get really really good shots but i figure that what i do will add to the existing videos and body of knowledge that you can find out there on the internet on the c3 uh, parking brakes or emergency brakes i was a little intimidated at first thinking that it was going to be pretty hard but it's not as hard as you think. So I hope that what I show in the video, you guys will find useful and informative. And hopefully for those of you who don't have those parking brakes installed, you'll feel comfortable in taking your wheels apart and fixing the brakes on that. So good luck with it and thanks for watching. And here we go. Okay, in order to do the parking brake or emergency brake, you have to take the caliper off and you have to take the disc off as well. Underneath the disc, there's going to be kind of a mini drum set. So that's what we're looking for right now. So in order to get the caliper off, there's a couple loosening nuts back here, which I'm just going to find and then unloosen. All right, so I've cracked the nuts. Let's see if I can get them off now. Yeah, I had to use the breaker bar to crack the bolts that are keeping the caliper attached. So once that was cracked, it wasn't very difficult to crank these off. They're about an inch long, so not too hard. And that allows you to remove the caliper from the brake disc. There's one of them out. This one is almost out. I don't really know what happened to my protective gloves here, but something happened to the thumb area. And there's the second one. So, two bolts removed. Now, nice. Time to put on some more gloves. All right, now that those bolts are out, I can take this caliper off. It slide pretty well right off. And then I'm just gonna find a good place to rest it. There, I can just put it off to the side slightly, like that. Should be good. Now to take the disc brake off. Luckily with mine, the rivets have already been removed, so I don't have to remove any rivets, and it should be pretty straightforward getting this off. Perfect. Now this area here is where the brake is supposed to be. And that's what I'm going to have to rebuild. I 
I can definitely appreciate why a lot of C3s don't have the emergency brake slash parking brake done. Probably a lot of local shops don't know how to do this, but if you take your time and figure out how to do it and learn a few techniques, it's definitely something that is possible to do yourself. So these are the little shoes and they'll go in like this and the other one, pop this out for a sec, the other one goes on this side like that. So eventually when you're, when you're done you get these things as parking brakes. It's got to be the worst design out there, but I got to get these fixed. This is what I'm using is a parking brake rebuild kit, which will include a couple of these things. and also all the new hardware that we need for that. It's quite a lot, but at least it's new. Here's my shoes for it. So I got to get this little part off. That little part is actually the shoe retaining clip. So I wasn't able to get it off. So I just ended up straightening it out and it looks like it's going to work fine so not a big deal. On the left hand side one, when I eventually got around to doing that, I did use a new retaining clip for the shoes so all good. I've decided to reuse this one since I can't get this bolt off and don't want to go crazy trying to get it off so I'm just going to reuse it. Seems to be good enough. Ultimately, next year I'm going to put on a new backing plate and that is going to mean a overhaul of this entire hub. I'm using some brake clean here to clean as much of this area as possible and get any oil or any other dirt items out of there but it's not as dirty as it looks so it's pretty clean it's just very ancient looking just unpacking the kit here it's a pretty comprehensive kit you get the retaining clips and springs. You also get the springs to hold the shoes together and you also get those large metal pieces that attach to the actual parking brake cable and you get the adjuster wheels as well. So pretty comprehensive kit and I think it's about $50 for the kit which is not too bad when you think about it. Here's some of the stuff that you need to do this. So I'm just going to lay that out. This spring goes on the bottom between those two. This is the adjustment wheel. So go into those spaces there. 
spring there. You've got your retaining pin hardware here. And then at the top, you've got the final spring mechanism as well. I do have these. I don't have to use those because I still have the original one, which is nicely hooked up to the existing parking brake cable. So the first thing you want to do is put this stuff together. It's easier to get these brake shoes into the correct position by already pre-setting up the bottom part of these shoes. And you'll see how that works together as I install it into the compartment. So the bottom spring is in. I want to put a bit of this on there. It's really just to lube the contact points. Which is one that's going to be there, the other one here, another one on this side, another one down here, and there's two on the bottom. Although I didn't show it, it's equally important to put that lubrication in the adjuster screw where the two pieces come together. So got these put together and now I'm just going to put them on here loosely. Okay before I put the brake shoes on I'm going to put these little pins in at least get them basically where I want them. I wanted to show this area here there's supposed to be a pin in there but there's no way that you can get a pin in through it because of the backing here so I'm gonna try and find a way to squeeze it through the front and then make it happen but this makes it the job a lot more difficult when you can't get the pins in and it would almost force you to want to take this whole thing out which I don't want to do right now I may in the future when I replace this entire piece but not right now so let's see how we can move ahead able to pop that in like that so grabbing a bit of wire here and I'm gonna tie it around these pins so I have some positive control over it there's nothing preventing you from attaching the wire to the ends of these pins before putting it in the backing plate and in fact looking at it now it would have been a better idea to attach the wire first and then put the pins in but either way they both work so you get the idea and I'm going to do the same to the other side so in the next view you can see that I've got the wire attached to that pin all right time to put the Brakes back on. I'll thread the wire through this hole here. Like so. And I'll do the same on the other side. these on. The important part of this process is since the shoes are 
completed at the bottom is to insert the bottom part first, spread the shoes apart, and get it into the space between the hub and the backing plate. When that's in place, then you can start to feed the retaining pins through the holes in the brake shoes by using the wire as a guide. It takes a little bit of patience to line this up and then to thread the wire through the holes in the brake shoes, but it is doable and as far as I know that's the best way to align the pins through the holes in the brake shoes. It's just about aligning this guy up now. What I'm talking about here is aligning the retaining pin through the hole in the brake shoe. I was eventually able to successfully get the retaining pin through the hole in the brake shoe and then able to move on to the next step of the process, which you're going to see in just a second. Now I've just got to line up some hardware on the top, parking brake mechanism. Just aligning this mechanism with grooves that are on the top of the brake shoes. The mechanism is already connected to the parking brake cable, so I'm good to go. Next step is to put on these things. So you can take this wire again, thread these guys on. So now you got both of those threaded in. Pull this out. There's barely enough room to squeeze in that spring plus the cap, but if you pull the brake shoes out, you can find that sweet spot where you can just squish these things through. Once you have it through, you're pretty much good to go. Almost in there. we go. Get the cap on. So the idea is to get that spring over that and then turn it and secure it. Let's see if we can do that. that one in place. We'll leave the wire on it for now. I ended up taking the wire off for this one. The pin that faces forward or the front of the car is a little bit easier because you can actually reach around behind that and push on the pin and that helps out considerably. Now the cap. Squeeze them in.
Justin. There, and you can see that one is in nicely. So with this guy here, I can take the pad off of it. And now it's just about putting the shoes back in place on the top and making sure that I have the parking brake mechanism in the right spot. So I'm going to do that now. I'm using a combination of tools here. I'm using a scriber because it's a long pointed thing like a screwdriver and it really helps me get a hold of the spring. And I'm also using a flathead screwdriver as well to help me out. Just doing some fine tuning on the adjustment screw. I want to get the adjustment as small as possible, meaning that the brake shoes are as close as possible together. The last part is to put in the upper spring for these things. So the best way to do it is to stick one on by reaching in and attaching it. All right, just trying to move the spring in place. To put the right side spring onto the brake shoe, it's a good idea to catch the spring with that scriber and then slide it or put the scriber in the hole of the shoe and then slide the spring off the end of the scriber into that hole and it generally works out pretty well. So as it is right now, I've got the springs in parking brake in and everything is getting close to being aligned. So these two little things, these tabs can fold over here. Like so. Reusing the old retaining clip for the brake shoes seems like it'll be fine. The metal, although it doesn't look so great, is still strong enough to keep the brake shoes in place. So overall I'm good with that. So the parking brake cable is also attached as well. So this one is ready to go. So this is the rear disc. It's huge and it's heavy. This is the drum area in here. And before I put it back on, I'm just going to clean that off a little bit. Just using some emery cloth. a little bit better inside. Once you get it lined up, you can pretty much just wiggle it on. There's no way that you'd be able to get this disc on if the parking brake shoes were too far apart. So by using the adjustment screw, you can adjust it just perfectly so that disc goes on fairly easily and snugly, but not too tight. There, that gets the drum part of the disc brake on the parking brake area. So that's awesome. Just doing a couple checks here. I still have my clip in there, which is good. 
and I also have my clip which is back here I'll see if I can show it to you there's another clip down there which I have that one's still good so all the parking brake cable and clips are in place Getting the caliper back on the disc is sometimes tricky, and here's a technique that I use. The reason it's tricky is the pistons are spring-loaded, so they automatically close pretty tight. So I'm going to have to spread these brake pads. As much as I can in order to get it in. All right, the pin is in place, so now I've got to spread these things as far as possible, and I hope I can do it. I'm just squeezing the outermost pad as close as possible to the outside of the caliper as I can. And it takes a little bit of squeezing, but it moves slowly and eventually makes it to the furthest part of the caliper. So I've got that one spread in pretty well. You can easily use the vice grip pliers to pinch the top of the brake pad metal portion with the outside of the caliper. There's how I'm keeping that one open with the vice grips. And hopefully I can push the other one back and stick that in myself. All right, perfect. All right, the pads are over the disc. Now all I have to do is tighten up the caliper. Okay, so now the caliper is on, the caliper bolts are on, and I just need to take the pliers off of both of these, and then the pads will go in place properly. So let's do this. There we go. Once the car is driven, these will settle down into their respective places and we're good to go. So on this, we've got the parking brakes installed, put the disc back on and then put the calipers with the brake pads back in. And that'll do it for this wheel. So that completes the video on the parking brake or emergency brake on this Corvette. So I did the right wheel, that's what I highlighted in this video. After I did that, I moved on to doing the left wheel. So exactly the same process of doing it. I used the same techniques of using some wire to help me thread the parts on um, through the brake mechanism. Everything seems to look fine at this point. And once I drive the Corvette around, I'll be able to do some fine adjustments by using that adjusting screw mechanism and fine tune how those shoes are riding inside of that drum slash disc of the Corvette. So when I was doing the left side, 
I noticed that the caliper screws that you use to tighten the caliper on are pretty much dead as far as the thread is concerned. So what I did, I'll do a close up on these things here. So pretty much not good in this area here. So I've ordered some new ones and they're gonna be arriving any day now. So once I get those, I'm gonna stick some brand new ones in there and that should be good for the duration that I'm using that caliper set. So the new ones are gonna have a new lock washer and also an exact replica bolt, which is made out of high tension type of steel that is not gonna snap off in there. Oh, just as I was editing this, new parts came in for the caliper bolts, which is great. So that concludes the video. Hopefully you learned something. It's another thing that I'm doing to this C3. So my next job is going to be moving on to doing the power steering cylinder removal and restoration, or I'm just going to do a replacement on that. So we'll see. That video is going to be coming very, very soon. So subscribe to the channel if you want. I really appreciate it. It helps me know that there's people that are interested in this type of stuff. And you know what, if you want to hit the like button and add a comment as well, and I will reply to that. So take care for now, and we'll see you all in the next video, which is going to be coming very soon. Just got a few more things for the Corvette that I wanted to show you. I've got the front brake line system, which is here. It has the long line that goes underneath from left to right. And smaller lines for each one of the, the wheels. So happy to get that. This one here is the over the axle rear brake line in stainless steel. Well, they're all stainless steel. Um, that's great. These ones here are to the left and right rear brake calipers. And finally, I have this long one here which goes down the left side of the Corvette from the front to the back and they're all pre-shaped stainless steel. So I'll be happy to install those as soon as I can.